All right. Um, hello, everybody. Um, we are joined by Ryan Atkins, and we have been online friends for a while. So this is really cool. Hey, Ryan, how are you? Hey, Tiffany. Great to be here with you today. This is so fun. I love uh, I love this. So I know I it's like I already know a little bit about you know your story, but I think a lot of people don't who are listening. So if you don't mind, let's start from the beginning and how you you know became a person with a spinal cord injury, which brings you you know to our podcast today. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, I was a student at the University of Cincinnati. Okay. Uh, Two thousand nine, I felt like I was on top of the world. I was uh, fully involved in a variety of college activities, uh, had my sights set on future business success. And I, I, at that point, I thought life couldn't get any better. And I was on the way to a college retreat uh, in the fall. I lost control of my vehicle mm -hmm. and flipped multiple times on the side of the highway. I, I was airlifted to a local hospital. And in the, in the hospital was being paralyzed below the shoulders, a C3, C4 yep. injury, and told that this would, this would be the rest of my life. And so wow. all of a sudden the world, the world that I knew had completely flipped upside down. And that's the case for everyone that has a, a severe spinal cord injury. And I know um, C3, 4 is a pretty higher level injury. What's your um, mobility like exactly with your level? So thankfully, I was able to, after a few months on the ventilator in the hospital, yeah, I was able to uh, be able to breathe on my own and eat on my own once again. Mm -hmm. So that was, I was very thankful for that. Thank God. Uh, yes. So I, I, I was able to shrug my shoulders um, and I can move my, my right bicep a little bit. Okay. Uh, but, but uh, yeah, I'm very, very thankful uh, to have the breathing back and to be able to be vent free. You know, and that is what you need to do is always talk, you know, I like to talk about, you know, what you have and I like to focus on the positive, you know, and I always say, you know, I'm glad I am here, even though my injury happened to, you know, talking about just such a crazy life change, though, at that age is such a, you know, wow. So I know I was 14 when my accident happened and that was hard because I always say I was right before my ninth grade year. But within college, what was that like, you know, having to change that whole your life that way? Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was quite a quite a shift. I mean, I, I got home. Uh, I was in the hospital for about four months. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, I was in my I lived in my fraternity house at the time of the accident. And I had to move back in with my parents' house. The oh. the, uh, the the dreams of every twenty one year old. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, that must have been so hard. Oh geez. Yeah. So yeah, I had to adjust being back in with my parents. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, but I, yeah, it was difficult being. About a half hour away from college, yeah. and and I, I tried pretty hard to stay engaged, stay involved yep. on campus, but it, it proved to be pretty difficult, and and so I, I took a few years off of okay of classes, and um and so yeah, it it was hard to hard to stay mm -hmm. as engaged as I was, but yeah, but other opportunities presented themselves, and uh, I was. A new a new story began to unfold in my life. So when you were injured back in 2009, were people pushing activity-based therapy on you initially after your injury like that people are doing now where they're going to the gyms and stuff and trying to get movement back? Have you done any of that kind of stuff? Uh, in, in terms of like the physical therapy aspect? Yeah, 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 that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah I, I, I spent, I would say the first two years after the accident, mm -hmm. uh, most literally all of my time, was spent in rehab and wow. um, just stretching and working my muscles and yeah. you know, just trying to get back as much movement as I could do. And, and I, I mean, I still, I, I still try to incorporate stretching and standing frame and pushing my body as much as I can. Yeah. Uh, but it's not mm -hmm. like the full time, full time effort that it was the first couple of years. I know, I know, I know. We, I think everyone has those first couple of years after their injury where you should do that too. You should yeah. because you don't know those first couple of years are so critical, they say. And that's cool. That's cool. It can be expensive though. I know my health insurance didn't cover that much. I got like only like four months, which kind of sucked. Was your insurance pretty friendly? Did they cover yeah, all those? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they're pretty friendly and had some, 
very, very uh, just generous um, friends and family that yeah. you know, were able to help out. I still have a physical therapist friend who comes over once a week and helps stretch me out. So awesome. that's been quite a blessing. That's good. Okay. So after, you know, you kind of decided you want to go back to school after your transitional years, I call them transitional years after a spinal cord injury. So you're kind yeah. of figuring out where the heck you want to, you know, your brain too. There's always this like trying to figure out, okay, this is my new life now. I can't let it bog me down. I got to like stay on the right track. So for you, what was like, how did you make sure that you try to stay, uh, stay on the straight and narrow after you realize, okay, this is my life. I got to stay, you know, stay positive. And so many people don't stay positive. I mean, it's hard. So what did you start, what did you do like in the beginning, like to kind of get, make sure that you stayed positive? Well, I think the first, the, the first, the first place my mind went was, oh, I need to, I need to do all this rehab to, uh, to get back on my feet and mm -hmm. get back to the life that I knew. Right. And after about a year of realizing like, oh, this, this is a, uh, this is beyond my own work ethic, beyond my own effort this is a mountain I can't really conquer right on my own and so I, I mean I would look down on my motionless arms and legs and wonder I mean, either my life now is completely meaningless or there's a much bigger purpose to my life yeah and so I I, I really had to turn the focus away from myself and to figure out okay what, how do I still how can I still have purpose how can I how can I still live meaningful days mm -hmm. and that, that's when I began to start I started writing and I opened up on my blog. Uh, it was a blog, flatonmyback.com. Cool. Uh, that it, it just allowed me to really connect with others um, in a new way. I, I really started practicing being vulnerable and yeah. sharing about my struggles, about my accomplishments, and what I was learning along the way. And it really, really gave me a newfound confidence um, that I, I still could have. I still could have an impact on this world. I still yeah. um, could connect with people in meaningful ways. And it really just gave me a voice uh, in a position where I didn't really feel as if I had the same capabilities that I once did. I think that for you too, you're so strong-willed, it seems. I mean, I don't know you that well, but for a lot of people, when they go through a spinal cord injury, it's really hard to stay mentally strong. And do you feel like this was who you were before your injury, before your injury, sorry, or do you feel like this is something you discovered after your injury? Well, in terms of, uh, yeah, in terms of the, being strong world about it, I, mm -hmm. I, I, there was definitely a season where I, I, I doubted my abilities. I, mm -hmm. I lost a lot of confidence in who I am and in what I'm capable of, yeah. of be, without the use of my arms and legs. And I think writing allowed me the opportunity to recognize, hey, I can, I can still work hard at this. I can still, I, I can still have meaningful, uh, I can still have meaningful days. I can still make an impact um, even if I have a spinal cord injury. And, and so writing opened up a new door with, with blogging and mm -hmm. it really allowed me to connect with people in, in ways that I hadn't before and mm -hmm. very thankful for the avenue that opened. I know. Writing is one of those things that a lot of people discover after any kind of traumatic injury. I, writing is so cathartic, and I have read a bunch of your stuff, and it's super good. And I, we're going to talk about your book later, which don't people definitely need to check it out. And I think, though, for you, I just do you think your family and friends help make you the strong person you are, or do you think you just discovered it on your own on how to, you know, be a strong-willed person after an injury like yours? Well, I, I was very, very thankful to to have friends and family just be able to support me um, right from day one, the hospital and everything Yeah. around that. Uh, I would, most importantly, my, my, my faith. I oh, yeah. really became to understand um, how, how God still, still had a plan for my life and he wasn't, my, my story was not over yet. And, mm -hmm. and so recognizing that uh, just, just the need for a power outside myself. Yeah. Um, I, as a college kid, I, just assume that, oh, I, I can do everything on my own and I'm, I am fully capable of, <laughs> I don't need anyone else. And yeah. mm -hmm. coming to a place where I need to rely on, yeah. um, rely on God's power, rely on the help of family and friends. Totally. I, it, I love that because I'm, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not super religious. That's okay. You got someone to help you out there. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, doing a, doing a spinal cord injury podcast. 
Make hey. me a little more comfortable about muscle spasms. That's all right. I get spasms all the time. We got to do yeah. a little break real quick. Are you okay? Are you yeah. okay? Are you okay? All right. I'm good. good. I'm all back. Right. Listen, you got to help there. That's nice. You got a person to help you out. So, but no, I just think it's really interesting. I know that, you know, I've been around, I've been paralyzed for a really long time and I've met a lot of people who just, you know, get really depressed and they kind of just want to become hermits and especially life is so hard you know it can you can decide to say life is really hard with spinal cord injury and that's kind of why I love having you on the show our topic we want to talk about is how to kind of balance the whole optimism versus reality thing you know yeah. when you're paralyzed right because so many people just want to focus on getting better and getting back to and it's not really the reality right no yeah I I, I think balancing optimism hope and reality is 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 a crucial aspect no matter what someone may be dealing with right. and yeah we may be dealing with spinal cord injuries but everyone has some type of challenge that they're facing in their day-to-day -day life when we, we look forward to the future and we we need something ahead that gets us excited about waking up in the morning and i think for me early on i i had such a specific hope of, oh, I'm going to be back on my feet in one year and I'm going to be back on campus and everything's going to go back to normal. And yeah. when that didn't happen, uh, I, it was devastating. And I, I didn't realize the impact that um, that would just happen on my overall mm -hmm. uh, demeanor, my mental health, everything. Yeah. And so I, I had to get to a place of recognizing, hey, I, I need to take inventory of where I am right now. And a, a lot of it clicked when I um, read some of the writings of James Stockdale. Ooh, okay. He was he was an admiral in the Vietnam War, okay. and he wrote about his observations of prisoners of war. Well, while they, while so many had this specific expectation of, oh, this is going to be over by Christmas. This is going to be over by Easter, and when that didn't happen, they they would fall apart, and they would, a lot of them ended up dying. In, in the prison and and so what, what i like about stockdale's words mm. um it's called the stockdale paradox cool. in which it, it, we we do not want to we can't lose sight of the hope um that will eventually prevail and that and that things can get better uh, but we in the midst of that we can't we cannot lose um sight of the reality that of our current struggles we need to we right. need to be disciplined to take inventory of where we are right now and and so when when I when I heard those words, it it really clicked for me. Of yeah, hey, it's okay. great. It's great to have hope for the future. Yep. It's great to be excited about moving forward. But at the same time, hey, I've got challenges in my day to day life. Whether it's you know taking longer to get ready in the morning or right. um, muscle spasms, like right <laughs> in the middle of our interview just now. Yeah, that happens. Uh, Whatever. <laughs> hey, I I need to um, figure out with what I need to do about spasticity. I need to. I need to make sure I have good voice software to yep. to do do the work I want to do and and take inventory of what challenges are here that um, it allows us to um, yeah. still continue to move forward. I believe with with hope, no matter what our circumstances may be. Absolutely, you know I forget this really smart quote, but it has something to do with like try not to I think wish for something you can't have, but to enjoy your what you have now, and that'll make sure you are always a happy man. And which is yeah. kind of not like don't hope for a better tomorrow but it's like life is short and so there's a lot of truth to just trying to look around you and to, to, to just um to kind of pine for something that you used to have though is is, is kind of i know we can't help it but it, there's a lot of truth in that okay so let's talk a little bit about i want to talk about now so it's kind of transition but your your adorable marriage your your wife and you have known each other for a very long time and I think this is just a great little story that I want to add to your interview because I think people would like to hear these love stories. So if you don't mind, just kind of, bring, you don't, and I think too, you can just talk about how you guys met and then we'll, I'll just talk a little bit. We'll talk a little bit about, you know, just some tips and stuff for marriage in your, when you're yeah. paralyzed. So yeah, I know you've met, you knew, you've known your wife since you were children, right? We were, we were in second grade together. Yeah. And I, I had a big crush on her that <laughs> year, but fortunately, she was interested in my best friend. So, <laughs> so, uh, so she ended up switching schools that year, and I did not see her again for about thirteen years. Wow! Okay, uh, we were connected online, and 
and after my my accident she heard she heard about um what had happened and mm -hmm. um recognized that um i was um, coming home and she was in the middle of a massage therapy school mm -hmm. and so she reached out and said hey i i'm learning this about massage if there's anything i could do to help i don't know if you remember me but yeah let me know <laughs> and so I immediately took her up on it and oh yeah for sure and so it was very mm -hmm. helpful um, but pretty soon we we became um, really good friends and a few years after that began dating and we were married in 2016 that's amazing I love that story it's guy you guys are seem so happy together too I know there's a lot of you know hashtag interabled couples and people are always talking about how a, you know life is an interabled couple and all these different advices and tips that people share online and you guys do a lot and what are some of like some you know big things that you'd let's say you were talking to someone let's say a guy was newly injured and he's thinking about dating what what are what's some advice you'd give to someone in a chair a man or a female just to, you know what it's like you know when you're dating someone that's able-bodied is there any advice or just stuff you'd want to share just in that kind of world so some people i think get intimidated or nervous yeah i mean i think for the, the two of us i mean stephanie and i talk about this pretty often is that mm -hmm. well well someone may look at us and think oh wow that that looks difficult or that looks different mm -hmm. i mean there are i mean every marriage every relationship is going to have its own unique challenges and struggles mm -hmm. and i mean we have yeah. a lot of the same ones whether it's communication or um yeah just trying to understand hey what yeah. where are we going forward as a couple uh, but I, but i think one thing for, for my end um mm -hmm. that i that i I'd, I'd like to do a, a better job of doing and, and i imagine it could be in any situation but, but i think sometimes when it when it comes to uh, my um back or shoulder pain or mm -hmm. frustration with specificity or something i, I mean I, it may be often tempting to um, take it out on stephanie and just take my frustration out yeah. on someone i feel very safe with um and so and I, obviously i don't i don't want to do that i want to refrain and, and show grace and patience but yeah i mean that's one thing i would hope that i'm not taking out my frustrations about my physical body yeah um, out on my wife yeah i've recognized that can even have i think anyone who's paralyzed has to deal with these struggles and you definitely if you're with someone romantically you'll have to learn how to rein those in because i don't care how long you've been paralyzed you're always going to kind of miss and have frustrations so that's a good yeah. tip absolutely how about you know just like caregiving stuff i don't with my my boyfriend he wants me to call him my husband even though we're not married my boyfriend okay so he, he helps me a lot and sometimes he helps me too much and i kind of don't like it does that ever do you ever worry about your partner like burning out helping you too much i i sometimes i have luckily i have pcas too um, just something that you ever think about that too just so you can separate the two or do you not even care as much or you're not worried about oh that? i mean i mean that that is a mm -hmm. yeah i think that's a continuous kind of like inner struggle sometimes and yeah stephanie does a great job of saying hey look like i'm happy to help you i'm happy to do whatever yeah you need and and obviously i want to do what i can whether it's Hey, let's hey you know what the nurse can help me with um th this sure. aspect of the day yeah let's when, when we're together let's just focus on each other and yeah and yeah sure you can feed me but besides that we're just going to focus on each other and talk yep. and yeah yep. everything like that so that's good so yeah just trying to, to differentiate if there's something someone else can do that's to good. help me that's good um, but yeah that's yeah good. i mean it's I, i'd be lying if there if there's never that thought of like oh how's like is she burning out how's how's you mm -hmm. feeling and so so yeah I want, I want to do a good job of checking in with her if she Absolutely. needs like time on her own or time out like yeah i yeah. want to do what i can to uh, make sure she has that yeah. and and so hopefully we're we're continuing to communicate about that in a way that um make sure each other's needs are met that's a good I, that's very good advice i love that i know that um you guys have been married for four years do you have any plans for babies in the future or anything like that yeah i mean that's that's still place and we'd like to mm -hmm. move move forward in uh okay. mm -hmm. hopefully the future so 
That'd be cool. Not, not quite there yet, but yeah, we'd love to. I know it's kind of hard right now with the whole pandemic and stuff. Everyone's plans are kind of weird right now, but I, you guys would make good parents, I think, if you decided to do that. I love to. We would love to do that. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about your book because I know that's been something you've, I think, when did you get it published? How long ago was your book published? I forget. Uh, just, just uh, right before Christmas. Before Christmas. So now the title. You can, why don't you say the title for us? One Step Closer. One Step Closer, it's cool. How, an, how a life-altering accident led me to everything I almost missed. Okay, wow. Led you to almost, that's a good title. So this must have been, a, like you must have thought of create, writing this book after writing your blog, right? And then you're like, I should put this all together in a book or something. What was the, right, what was the idea for the book? Yeah, absolutely. I, I had written on my blog, flat on my back, mm -hmm. uh, for, for a few years. And was really getting to a point where I thought, hey, I've, I've got a lot of material here. How do I put this in, put this together in a way that um, really can communicate um, wh why I believe that we can have hope no matter what our circumstances are? Mm -hmm. And I was wrestling with ideas of what to do and, and didn't really feel great about um, where everything was headed. Mm -hmm. I thought, I don't know if I had the makings of a book. Well, a little over a year ago, I ended up um, – Going back in the hospital for another month, oh, no. I, I descended into a pretty dark place. And in 2019, I got out, and I'm like, okay, it's it is it is time to publish this book. Um, now, now I I really want to get this message out, and so that really kicked me into gear okay. of saying, hey, I want to communicate that um, what, what I believe is a blueprint to live with hope no matter what our circumstances are, and hopefully. And by weaving my story in, show that um, I, I think it's really possible um, to, to continue to have purpose and meaning no matter what um, challenges uh, we may be facing. So cool. So your book, it's a, not an autobiography per se. It's more of like a self-help type of book, would you say? Well, I, I, would, call it, I would call it a memoir, I, but I, I, I didn't want to just write a book that said, hey, here's... Here's my story. Just right. read all about me. I, I want to, obviously, I, like I want it. something that, I want something that the reader can take away. For sure. Um, mm -hmm. And, and yeah, I weave my story in throughout uh, about, yeah, the injury and marriage and yeah, um, what I what I believe and and so I, I it, it's been a fun it's been fun releasing it over the past couple months and uh, yeah, just excited to I uh, continue. Um, Hopefully it, hopefully it can be an encouragement to others. I love it. You know, so many people write a book after their injury and it's just like, here's my story, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, I will read your story. And it's in a book and it's kind of, you know, <laughs> I don't want to sound like a biatch, but sometimes I will get a little bored because the basic injury story book is kind of like, you know, it's going to happen. They have their spinal cord injury and fortunately they come through it and it's usually a positive ending in a lot of the books. But I think what's cool about your book is that you're trying to like, Anyone, no matter what they're going through, can take something from it and apply it to their own struggles, which, you know, I think that's the idea for every book, but yours makes it more kind of the way you lay it out in your book, right? It's kind of cool. Yeah, and Tiffany, I, I think what, I, I think one, one of the coolest things about um, what I've heard from other readers so far mm -hmm. is quite a few people have said, oh, oh, I, I read the book because I was curious a little more about what your daily life is. Mm -hmm. But then when I finished it, I recognized, oh, I deal with all these same struggles too. See, and, and I think yeah. we, we all have, we all wrestle with comparison. We all wrestle with um, living a meaningful life. Mm -hmm. We all wonder, hey, what, why am I here for? What, what am I doing? Um, yeah. what, what am I doing that's going to matter years from now? And so I, that, that's really my hope is that whether someone has spinal cord injury or um, is dealing with relational issues or uh, other physical challenges, that it can really be a message that um, can ring true universally. That's so good. I know. So, okay. So when, when you got your book published, did you self, how did you get it published? Cause I, this is like as a writer, I'm kind of curious, did you self, did you find a, um, a publishing company to publish it for you? So I, I looked into that, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, ended up deciding to self publish. Cool. And I was mm -hmm. able to do that. It was, it's actually kind of a fun yeah. entre entrepreneurial pursuit. pursuit. Yeah. Uh, I got to find, I got to work with some great 
um, editors and designers. And okay. I, I really wanted to go, go all the way to make sure it was like, it, it was a very professionally published book. It looks amazing. Um, it looks so good. Who did the artwork on your cover? So I, I found a designer in Indonesia. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it was, it was fun to work with different designers and editors from That's all over awesome. the world. That's and awesome. so, yeah, it was, a, it was a fun project. And um, yeah, excited to, I'm excited to get the message out. So where can people find your book? I know it's on Amazon, right? Yeah, it, it's, it's definitely on Amazon. And if someone is, all right, here's another spasm. That's right. Oh. <laughs> okay, so let me just think here. Your so, book, okay, let's, let's start with the URL, where they can find your, in your book. Yeah, so it, it's on Amazon. And then if someone is interested, if you want to learn more or just download the first chapter for free, Yeah, um, you can do that at, at uh, readonestepcloser.com. Read one step closer dot com. Ooh, so, I like that. Yeah, okay. you get the mm -hmm. you get the the first chapter. You can download that for free. Okay. Um, there's some book bonuses, which would love for people to check out. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's I'm I'm uh, I'm excited to maybe connect with some of your listeners. Absolutely. And, if so, um, if anyone's to... listening, they can find you right on that website. Then, right, all your contact info, I'm sure, is on there. Yeah. Yeah. Read one step closer dot okay. com. And also, just for, you're on Instagram, right? Why don't you throw out your Instagram handle? Uh, yeah, on social media, I'm, uh, search Ryan S. Atkins. Ryan S. Atkins, yes, because it's fun to follow you on there. Everyone likes to see what you're up to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really been, it's been, it's been fun to be a part of the Spinalopedia community and yeah. I'm getting to connect with all the great yes. work you guys are doing there. Yes, we love your, love your guest posts that you've written for us. And, you know, it's, it's always good to have some very good writers share their words with us. So I, we all, Josh and I love it, your words. So thank you again, personally. We do love it. And if you ever want to share any more guest posts, we're all, we'd love some more. We always want some all more. All right. <laughs> yeah. Great. This is so good. And so I hope you sell a ton of books this year, Ryan. I really do. I want, you know, success in all types of areas. Are you going to write anything more? Do you have any plans for what's your next kind of business school? Just promote your book for now and kind of see what's going on after that. Well, I would say, yeah, for, the, for this year, I'm, I'm trying to focus on, um, yeah, just continuing to okay. uh, get this message out. But, but yeah, I, I'm, I, I still try to write at least a little bit every day just to just to keep my ideas moving and and keep my thoughts fresh and so we'll, we'll see what that leads to in the future all right well you know good luck dealing with i was going to talk about the pandemic and how you're dealing with that but we don't need to talk about that but i hope that you and your wife are doing great over there in ohio and have a good 2021 you too well thanks right. a lot tiffany yeah thanks for joining us and i will be talking to you sometime soon i hope Sounds great. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks.